Okay, when I was a door-to-door sales guy, um, anyone do door-to-door sales? Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. You know, everyone else suffer on a door like me? Okay, cool, yeah. It, it's not, not a fun environment. I actually did door-to-door sales for the explicit purpose of trying to learn sales in a crappy environment. I was looking at Robert Kiyosaki, and I was like, that guy knows how to sell. I think I learned how to sell. And he was the worst salesman in Xerox for like years. And he almost quit and he almost was gonna go find another job. He's like, oh, I gotta learn this skill. And as soon as he learned the sales skill, uh, he realized he could go and be an entrepreneur. It was actually the thing that he told himself he needed to learn before he allowed himself to be an entrepreneur. It was very fascinating. And so this is what happens, right? When I was doing door-to-door sales, I'm knocking the doors. Hey, how's it going? Um, we're spraying the Joneses' house down the street. Half the cost is just getting our truck here. Um, so we can do it for half off. It's like four or five o'clock okay for you today. And that's how I would start my pitch. And be like, wait, what? I know, I'm talking fast. The like, Joneses down the street, we're, we're here spraying their house. Um, they got a bunch of bugs. Half the cost is just getting the truck here so we can do it for half off while we're here. It's four or five o'clock okay today. And let's go back to And I'll just wait. And they would go, well, how much is it? Perfect, right? They've now engaged in the sale with me, right? Or they would go, there, there was a series of red flags would pop up. Now, what do you think the concerns with somebody would be when I'm selling them pest control? It's safe. It's safe. What else? Safe. Is it certified? What's it made of? Yeah, license. Many, yeah, exactly. License. How much is it? Yeah, I love that question. Yeah, who are the Joneses? I don't know the Joneses. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I did either a few times. <laughs> um, so what's interesting is like, th- this is the way the brain experiences a sale. And it's usually in this order. First, I'm going to have a concern about the product you're talking about in general. Then I'm going to have a concern on my ability to even use it. Then I will have a concern on do I have the resources that I feel like I need to be successful with it. So first, concern about the product. We call that the vehicle-based concern. Then my ability to use it is an internal-based. Yeah, I, I, I see that this could work in general, but it's not, it's not a fit for me. We're fine with the bugs, right? Then over here on this side of a resources-based concern, I'm sold on the fact that it works in general. I'm sold on the fact that it could work for me. I'm not sold. How much time will this be? What's the contract, right? What, how much is it going to cost me? How much time does it take for you guys to actually apply this stuff? Those are resource-based objections. And so what I want you to do is start getting good at that, identifying what the objections are that cause the actual sale. Okay, so, um, okay, so we could hit back to my slides here real quick. Now, this is going to be super cheesy, okay? But I call it the, I call it the sales-o-meter. Whenever I'm watching you guys' comments on the internet, I'm running with the sales-o-meter in my head. <laughs> super cheesy, okay? But it's something that I drew to kind of map how sold you are while you're listening to me online. So I'm actually watching your comments. And I'm saying, okay, let's look at these comments online. I want to see, like, how sold is this person, right? And I'm... What, what do you think I hear online a lot? Let's say I'm, I'm talking about um, Offermind. It's on Labor Day? Definitely heard that one. <laughs> it, with that, it's on Labor Day? What? Is that a vehicle, an internal, or a resa- resource-based concern? Right, okay. Now, now that tells me because the brain experiences it typically in that order. First vehicle, then internal, then external. Are they sold on Offermind itself? Yes. Yeah. Are they sold on their, you know, I, I do need that. That's a good fit for me. Someone who says, oh, it's on Labor Day. Yeah. 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 Where are they getting stuck? Resource-based. That's good news. In my head, that means they're two-thirds sold. You see what I'm saying? And it's a really good indicator because what will happen is people will set back and they're not a good salesman sometimes because they go back and they start telling stories about the vehicle again. Like, oh man, you're telling stories about the wrong thing. They're stuck on resource. They're stuck on external. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, oink. Yeah. (laughs) I love that he started that. (laughs) Okay. So this is, again, the way the brain experiences the sale. So the first thing I need to sell somebody on is the vehicle or the product, the solution itself. Okay. Uh, belief of the possibility of the product or service even working. 
So work it in general. The second thing, like I said, is, uh, um, is that internal-based concern. And what they're asking themselves is, do I have the ability to drive that vehicle? Do I have the ability to pilot that vehicle? That whether, does it fit for me? The third thing that the brain will go through is external-based concerns. There's a lot of resource-based things. Do I have the resources? Is there enough gas in the tank? How much time am I giving myself to get there? Right? And they start saying those kinds of things, and you're like, oh, nice. It means you're sold on the vehicle. You know you want it. You know you can even drive it. External ones are always the easiest ones to break. Okay, if I was to put it in a few sentences, it would be like this. Can that thing work? Not for me, just in general. Does that get work? Like when I saw ClickFunnels the first time, I was like, does ClickFunnels do what he's saying it does? I'm like, oh man, I totally believe him. Boom, sold on the vehicle. Does ClickFunnels, do you think it could work for me? And Russell's like, look at this, look at this, look at this, you know, testimonial, look at this uh, case study, case study, case study. Holy crap, that could work for me. I don't know how to code. Right? And then, do I have the resources for it to work? And then I was like, whoa, 97 bucks a month. Right? We're literally doing the, the bean burrito option, you know, it's a, on our date nights. Okay. You, uh, you see, do you guys see in your audiences where people are getting stuck? Is that helpful to, to see it? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Because what's cool about that is now I can start tailoring more messaging to my audience. If I'm selling people in the ClickFunnels audience and I'm telling them, hey, I'm an accelerant to the ClickFunnels platform. I will teach you how to create the offer and the message so you have faster success with ClickFunnels. What do you think they're getting stuck on? Do you think they're sold on the vehicle? Yeah, yeah they're a ClickFunnels user, right? So, all right, well, that's, that's easy. That's awesome. It's one of the hardest ones to break. The second one, which is actually the hardest, is the, that internal. Do I have the ability to pilot that vehicle? Right? That's the one people get stuck on. And then do I have resources? But you see, I was, um, by choosing a market where I'm going to go and be very intentful on one, which one becomes a foundation, it actually removes sales barriers and red flags for me in their head. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a real life example of this, uh, who, who wants to do this with me? Anyone, anyone down? What beliefs are you stuck on here? Dangerous. Can it work? We're seeing it work. So what's the concern? Can it work for me? <laughs> Sorry, I still have it. It's probably not a resources-based concern because we're just gonna go find the guy who's got a wingsuit and a massive cliff, probably in you know New Zealand, <laughs> and jump off of it. So where, where's the hang-up? <laughs> Number two, right? You see, you see what I'm saying? All human behavior follows this pattern. It's not just a sales pattern. This is a behavior pattern. Whenever I'm like, oh, you know what? Because I, I, I truly want to fight Russell. I keep telling him I'm going to choke him out one day. And I'm, I'm <laughs> Did you see the 10X documentary? where I wrestled him in the robe. I don't know why I was wearing that thing. <laughs> but I wrestled him in that robe, and I knew I was going to get just dominated. Um, but uh, I keep telling him, like, dude, I'm, I'm totally going to choke you out. I'm just realizing how many times I'm going to have to get knocked out in order to get him once. <laughs> you know, They're like, uh, sold in the vehicle? Yeah, maybe. Internal? I don't know. Resources? You'll notice um, the third one is actually the easiest to break in almost every sale. What are the, what are the standard resource based concerns. Money, time, support from spouse, support from community. What decision doesn't include those things? They all do. People are used to overcoming type three, right? They're used to overcoming that third one, their resource, but they're, 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 they have a habit behind that. They've, they've made that decision multiple times. The hardest one is always number two, internal. Can I pilot that vehicle? 